Well, hello, and here today on the Rustic Love Box, what we're going to do today is we're going to work on our metal melting furnace. I'm primarily going to do aluminum in it, and uh, so we got a good start on it. And I'll just show you some of the components that I've put together so far. Well, I had already cut the piece off that I wanted, but this was a uh, hydraulic oil tank, I believe. It had some oil in here. I cut off about 16 inches. This is a 16 inch outside diameter tank. And uh, it had a round end on it like almost any uh, air compressor tank or something like that. But anyway, let me bring you over here to the bench and let's take a look at it. Well, this is the end of the tank. And uh, what I decided to do right here is the weld ridge of the tank and I cut right above that weld ridge and let's see I marked it before I took it apart so my seam is is pretty close and uh, so anyway this top part is going to be my lid what I did right here I used a coffee can to mark where I wanted my hole in the center of the lid. And uh, the reason why I wanted it that size is I'm going to use, use is some of this insulating blanket. And you see a lot of people, almost everybody uses this in their, their furnace. And I'm also gonna put at least a three quarter of an inch of uh, that castable uh, foundry cement in here. And uh, I'm gonna have some reinforcement wire in here to help support it, you know, for making the span. I wanna leave a, a ring in here. So that's why this can is here. It'll make a nice round symmetrical hole. So when I take that out, it'll be a nice slick opening there for the top. You can see that uh, I welded a bottom in this. So the original dome lid, and then I have a bottom. After I kind of came up with that, I have a bunch of these fire brick. And this is about inch and a half roughly. And I put them in there. And I'm gonna line the bottom with this. And then I'm going to put some more of that refractory cement in there. And here we go after uh, with a little bit of, of test fitting and all of that. I got all my pieces back down in there. And I even cut little corners to fit in these little blank spots. And uh, so probably what I'm going to do next is uh, see about fitting the burn chamber in there. Uh, this is going to be kind of the mold that I'm going to fit in here. Well, I have my fire tube positioned, I believe, correctly into my inner liner. And what I have is some of this thermal blanket. It's roughly one inch thick. And I've lined it on the inside. And that's going to leave me about three quarters to one inch. You know, because these buckets are tapered just a little bit, it's going to be a little thicker at the bottom, and I think that's probably going to be a good thing uh, when the fire's entering at the bottom, and it'll circle and come out at the top. So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to prepare my mix, and I'm going to uh, get it down in here, and I'll put it level to the top so I'll, I'll have uh, that thermal concrete right here all the way be a nice flat surface. Well, all right, we got all our refractory cement uh, poured in here and we used our five gallon bucket as a liner and it dried for several days and then I just took a utility knife and cut the walls and then I was able to kind of collapse it and with a little finagling got it out of there. But anyway, it made a real nice, smooth interior. The inside is very smooth, and 
here where the uh, fire comes in from the propane torch that I built, uh, it will swirl around and uh, so I think it's going to do pretty good. I have a ceramic coating that I'm going to paint on this and uh, I'll get started on that a little later today possibly. Here's a little cart that I made to uh, put the uh, forge on. It's got a little handle, kind of like a wagon. Only the front wheels can spin, you know, left and right. And uh, so the back wheels are pretty much kind of stationary. And this is going to be my lever. It's a foot pedal to raise and lower the lid on the uh, forge. So here's my lid and the way I made this hole is that I had a coffee can up in there whenever I poured this and the hole on the other side I cut it to where it was just big enough that this coffee can would kind of fit in there and it hold itself in place. Then when all this castable material uh, hardened I just took a utility knife cut it out and uh, it looks pretty good. This is the little foot pedal on how it works, the lid. You just step on it with your foot. It raises it up a little bit. Doesn't have to raise it up much for it to clear. This is the brand of uh, ceramic refractory type coating that I got to uh, put on that refractory cement and uh, I don't know anybody that uses it uh, it's a different brand than what I've seen in others and it's kind of a clay like material and uh, you'll mix it with water and just paint it on with a brush I put a good coat on there and uh, I'm gonna let it kind of set up and then probably uh, tomorrow I'll fire it up and kind of let it cure see what happens this is what it looks like on the inside you know just uh, evens the color out and I kind of wonder if it's going to change color after uh, it heat cures and everything. So anyway guys, I think we really had a good day as far as getting a lot done. You know, we got the mold out of it, uh, cleaned up the outside, got it ready for paint, uh, even put the ceramic coating on the inside and uh, you know, got a cart made for it, all cleaned up and everything. So. Uh, Maybe the next time we look at this, we'll be putting the burner in there and just firing it up and uh, maybe curing the inside out with that ceramic coating and see how that stuff works. So anyway, as always, I appreciate y'all coming by the shop today. This is Rusty Glove Box, and I'm out of here.